In today's video, we are going to cover advanced charting primitive such as candlestick chart, bubble chart, surface chart, map chart, infographics. You might understand that these charts are better than the previously or simple charting primitives, but they are intentionally covered over here because they are not just decorative, they serve some special purpose to represent some special data. So let us start with candlestick chart. A candlestick chart is not just a fancy bar chart with a different iconology. So you might think that it is just a simple bar chart with some new type of bar but candlestick chart is far different from our traditional bar chart. We use candlestick shapes to plot the high and low points which specifies the stock prices as well as opening and closing prices of the stock. Candlestick charts can convey a great deal of information in a very compact way. A complete candlestick chart combines both aspects, the aspect of line chart as well as the aspect of bar chart and is generally used in tracking of stocks, commodities and exchange items over a range of time. Let us see the candlestick which is the primary element of candlestick chart. So candlestick is just like burning the candle at both ends. So if you take one candle and it has wick at two ends, one is at top and second one is at bottom. There are the possibility that it can get burned at both stages or both ends, burning from top and burning from bottom. So we have at the end four elements in candlestick. If it is having two wicks, one wick is at top and another wick is at bottom. So there are basically four prices associated with each candlestick. The topmost is the high price. Now from an image you can see the yellow circled part which is showing high price which is at the top upper level of the candlestick wick. The low price is at the bottom of the candle wick. So there are basically two candle wicks. The upper part of the candle wick, upper candle wick is called as high price and the lower candle wick, the bottom part is called as low price. There is also something called as open price. Open price of a candle or a stock is the top of the lower shadow. So whatever the lower wig is there, its top is called as open price or I can call it as the bottom of the body which is actually highlighted by blue ellipse. The close price highlighted by pink ellipse which is showing the bottom of upper shadow or the top of the candle body. So basically there are two variations of candlestick as you can see. In a filled candlestick high price is followed by open price followed by close price and at the end we have low price. But in the hollow candlestick high price is more followed by close price and then we have open price and at the end we have low price. So this is nothing but opening and closing stock values of candle or a particular stock. Additional information that we should convey is that over a candlestick chart if body is hollow we say the closing price is greater than the opening price. Because in a hollow body, high price is first followed by close price, then it is followed by opening price and at the end it is having no price. If close price is appearing before the open price, we see that closing is greater than opening and buying in these kind of stock is much more expected. Similarly, if body is filled, some solid color then we say that 
closing price is lesser than opening price and for these kind of stock selling is dominant that's why the important information is being given by the candlestick body it's filled or hollow diagram the hollow or filled candlestick is indicating the direction of pressure if candlestick is hollow the buying is in dominance whereas candlestick is filled then means selling for that stock is a dominant in the market candlestick also displays a data set of values that are specific point in time so the candlestick chart is comprising of many candlestick elements over the some period of time so at a particular moment the values of stock is represented by one candlestick and over the period of time it is being represented by different different candlesticks in addition to the tracking the movement of price over a given period the length of candle body indicates the relative pressure of selling or buying so if the candle is of small size the pressure of buying is small if the candle size is bigger of hollow candle then pressure of buying is more similarly for selling if the filled candle size is small selling pressure is less whereas candle size of filled candle is high then the selling pressure of that candle or a stock is also high now let us see what is bubble chart bubble chart is basically adding one extra dimension of a data point chart remember data point chart is used when we have two axis values both are numeric that means we have numeric values to be present over x axis as well as over the y axis if we have three third axis which is also representing the information in a numeric form that can be represented with a bubble chart in a bubble chart a single bubble is denoting three values through two values of a bubble is actually determining the position by specifying its value over the x axis and over the y axis whatever the placement of data point is there is now represented by the bubble and the bubble is next varied in a its proportion of a size the size of the bubble is the third value which is indicating the value of third axis so in this particular chart as you can see the largest bubble is the green bubble of a series 2 at x value 40 and y value Similarly the smallest data point is blue dot or blue bubble of series 1 which is at 15,25 location there are three information which is associated with each bubble x coordinate its y coordinate and the size of bubble so all three dimensions collectively determines a single data point now bubble chart is help us illustrate apple to apple comparison as given in this particular diagram it is showing the life expectancy versus fertility rate and population of some world country your x axis is actually representing life expectancy rate whereas y axis is showing fertility rate of a particular country as well as the size of the bubble is actually giving population of that particular country so this is the data which is collected for north america and european countries where north american countries are shown in blue bubbles whereas european countries are represented as red bubbles now in this particular chart if you look at carefully this gbr and dbu is actually great britain and germany countries 
both are having same life expectancy rate and they also have approximate equal population size. But here both bubble placements are at different locations. So first one Great Britain is present at y-axis fertility rate 2.0 whereas Germany is placed at y-axis 1.4 fertility rate. So we can conclude that Great Britain and Germany is having approximately same population size, same life expectancy rate but fertility rate of Great Britain is more than fertility rate in a Germany. Now there is one more problem with this kind of bubble chart. Can you see any bubble below USA and Great Britain? No, but there is a single small data point because its value is third value. The population rate is relatively very low. That's why the size of bubble even not appears as a small dot. So if the third value is relatively small as compared to the third value of all the related data points, then it might happen that particular bubble may get unknown. So here Denmark's population is very small as compared to other American and new European countries. Drawback of bubble chart. So before opting or before selecting for a bubble chart, we must first check that, that all data values are actually visible clearly over the chart. Next type of chart is surface chart. Now, surface chart also allows you to convey information in three dimensions. So, we have values over the three dimensions, over the x-axis, y-axis and z-axis that can be represented with the help of the surface chart. Now, in this particular example, it is showing rainfall in centimeter by some city along its longitude and latitude. X axis is representing longitude while Z axis is representing latitude. So that is nothing but the plane of a some particular city. Whereas Y axis is giving the centimeter rainfall. How much centimeter of noted in each area. With a surface chart we use colors to separate the data range. Rainfall from 0 to 100 cm is denoted by color, whereas rainfall between 100 cm to 200 cm is denoted by red color, whereas the highest from 200 cm to 300 cm rainfall is being depicted by green color. So it would be easier for us to highlight or to identify those regions which are expecting the highest rainfall. Surface maps use colors to identify the range of data. For example, in this particular diagram, it is showing the pressure of wind in all four directions. So over the x-axis, we have north and south direction. Over the z-axis, we have east and west direction. And the pressure of air is given over the y-axis. Which pressure is the highest and which pressure is the lowest is also given by the legends over the left hand side. So over the left hand side as you can see the legends says that pink color is the lowest air pressure which is starting from 2000 and the highest air pressure is at 2500 which is denoted by red in color. From this particular diagram, we can also see that towards the northeast, the highest wind pressure is there. And towards the south and middle of west and east, the pink color is representing the lowest air pressure over a particular geographic location. So the colors which are used to represent the surface area or the range of the data over the surface is actually depicted by the legend. So far now we have seen different representation of data either in 2D and 3D manner. 
Uh, these charts are actually colored with some solid filling. Color of different regions are represented as different formats. But we can also represent surface charts in a wireframe format. So with the colors, it might happen. It is difficult to read some data points. So in order to render or to display a particular chart very quickly, we use wireframe plotting of a surface area chart. But there is also a problem with wireframes. The lack of solid color in a wireframe area makes it difficult to read a particular data point. The disadvantage of basic solid surface chart is that it requires so much time to get displayed or to get rendered. On the other hand, wireframes are rendered very quickly but it, there is a difficulty of reading a data point in a wireframe. So in next option, we are actually combining plain surface with a wireframe. In this particular approach, standard surface map is actually combined with wireframe. So along with the colors, wireframes are actually denoting the flow of the surface. Combining solid surface chart with wireframe surface chart will give us the final degree of data visualization with the ease of readability and color ranges. So that is all for today. We have seen the advanced starting primitives such as candle charts, bubble charts, surface chart. Thank you everyone for watching this video. This is Munira Dubia signing.